So welcome to day two, Psalms Through the Eyes of the Living Letters. And today we're going to be starting on Psalm 145. I believe we'll be able to finish it completely, uh, but we'll just leave that open to the Lord as, as, as time goes through. I want to spend some time looking through this. This, this uh, particular psalm for years has, has, had, has played a huge part in, uh, in my life just because there's a, there's a part of that that was that uh, there was a, a song that was done by a group called Shane and Shane. And uh, it's, it was written back, or excuse me, it was sung back in 2016. The words were actually written thousands of years before that. And they were, they were singing the psalm. And I love that because it, it begins to speak about uh, a place where the Lord is gracious and slow to anger, rich in love. He is good to us. And, and that's some of the things that we're going to be talking about as we walk through Psalm 145. And if you haven't ever heard that song before, I highly suggest taking the time. Go dig it up on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, you can also find it on Apple Music. More than likely, you can find it on Spotify and others as well. And it's the Psalms Live album that Shane and Shane did, Psalm 145 being the first song on that, on that album. And let me tell you what, it is powerful. It really is. It just it grips your heart and and begins to to allow you to to recognize the goodness of our Father. You know, one of the things that we see over and over and over again in Scripture is the the call to remember, 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 remember. Why? What are we remembering? We're remembering the things that Father has already done for us. We're looking back in our lives and seeing where we we've seen his, his heart, his hand and his, his, uh, his, his love towards us in so many different areas of life and our, our lives, places where we probably should have been dead, but yet father saved us out of, up out of the, the, the depths of that, of that pit or that, that difficult situation or the place where we, we could have been dead at. You know, we've seen we've seen Father that take care of us in ways that we never thought could uh, could possibly take place. Miraculous times when 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 things were so difficult. I can I can tell you in my own life, things were difficult, and and there were times that our house was going to be taken away, or the or the electricity was about ready to be shut off, or we didn't have any food. You know, all we had was a couple of cans of stuff, and uh, literally, I I remember hearing people talk about it when I was younger. And think, oh yeah, right. Mm -hmm, I'm sure. Until I had to deal with it myself, and literally only had a couple of cans left in the cupboard, and Father miraculously provided either through finances or through a job, a job, or any number of on any number of ways that He took us out of and provided for us during those times. And so I have to stop and remember the things that He's done for me because. In that place of remembering, in that place of, of recognizing his providence in my life, I can't help but praise him. I can't help but be thankful for him. As a matter of fact, this psalm is set under the uh, idea that it's, it's a psalm of praise. It's a psalm of, of worship to the Lord. And specifically, what it is, it's it's proclaiming is God's providential provision, not only for the needs of just us, but the needs of every single living creature on the earth. You know, it's funny. The animals, the plants, everything that's living inside of our world already depends on the Father. It's built in them, and they know that that as as they as as all that all that they need is provided from the Father. All their food is provided from the Father. Yeah, I know they may have to go out and hunt for it. They may have to go out and look for it, but it's provided for them in that place where they go out and they begin to hunt or begin to find or begin to seek. Hmm, that sounds an awful lot like a verse that we we remember from childhood. Those of us that have been Christians all of our lives, seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened up. Opened up to you. And I know it goes on, but I'll just just you know, that part of it. Seeking you will find was the key. I was I was keying in on. So this is God's providential provision for all of all living creatures, not just all mankind, all living creatures. Now, one of the one of the kind of interesting things about Psalm one forty five is that it's actually a an acrostic poem. Now, 
What does that mean? That means at the beginning of every verse, uh, it begins with a new living letter. So the first, the first verse, the first part of it, uh, with the exclusion of the a psalm, uh, a psalm of praise by David. That that's that's this kind of more like a title or a or an introduction into what the psalm is about. But I will exalt you, my God, the King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Begins with the living letter Olive. So as we go through this, I'm going to to bring up the the aspects of each one of these living letters as we go through Psalm 145. But there's one place that I want to spend a little bit of time, and that's when we're going to do a little bit of digging, and uh, because it's been it's been a place where Father has been messing with me about for a while now, and I'm I'm learning even more and more and understanding even more and more about this one particular phrase that has just, in a in a good sense, stabbed or pierced my heart, pierced my heart to the point of 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 the of the of an expression of the fear of the Lord that I have never had before, and in that place of the expression of the fear of the Lord, He's beginning to show me the power of that place. We'll talk about that here in just a little bit. So uh, stick around. If you're watching on YouTube, stick around and listen till we get to the finishing of this of this video. So Psalm 145 starts with this, just this, a psalm of praise by David. Aleph begins with this, I will exalt you, my God, the King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Now I found this interesting because in uh, in in a little bit later on in this, there's there's all actually a word that that pops up that talks about eternities, not eternity, but eternities. And I've there's a Hebrew word that is usually translated. And in this case, it's also translated as olam. And some of you may be familiar with olam. Olam just as an expression of of the place of forever, but it means more than that. It also means beyond the vanishing point. So what does that mean? What does that kind of hint to? It kind of hints to the place where there, you know, we can see out to the horizon, just like if we're standing on a beach and we're looking out over the beach, we can see to the point of the horizon, but we really can't see beyond that horizon from where we're standing, unless we get in a boat and we begin to head out towards that horizon. The further we get into the water, the further we go out from the beach, of course, the more that we're going to be able to see. Now, depending upon where we are, we may just see more and more and more water, but we're heading towards something, but we're not seeing the same thing that we were seeing before when we were standing on the uh, the beach itself. You kind of get the picture of, of what I'm saying here. So as we as we begin to move in the place of, of looking for the Lord, the further and the deeper that we go, the more that we're able to see, the more that Father shows us. And so that begins, this begins with this, and I will extol and bless your name forever and ever. Verse two, the little letter bait, every day I will bless you and I will laud your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you. There is a, there's an expression in this with the, uh, from the Hebraic perspective, that uh, some of the commentary that's along with Psalm 145 says this, that, that uh, the sages say that de and declared that whoever thoughtfully recites, recites this, poem, this poem or this psalm three times a day is assured a place in the world to come. Now, I don't want to get to do too much detail in with regards to that, but the truth is, is that this psalm, is it something that we have to do three times a day? Not necessarily. But in the same breath, there is a remembering. And to me, it should be a constant remembering, a constant reminding, not just three times a day, but a constant remembering of, Father, you are the one that takes care of me. I know that you are the one who walks me through these difficulties. Y'all, one of the key things that Father has been messing with me about has been confidence and trust or trust and confidence. And we've talked a good bit about this in the pre in previous videos in the Psalms. But to me, that has been such a huge part because I didn't realize how much I didn't trust. I knew that the Father had taken me through situations, but I, I still was looking at the world and still looking at situations and difficulties 
and saying, Father, well, how can you really truly bless me in the midst of this? Better yet, I would look at my own self. I would look in, inside of my own heart and say, how can you really bless me? You know, when I've not been the best that I could have been, I could have done this better. I could have said this better. I could, I could, I, I, I you know, I could hear your voice better. I could, I could follow your word more and that sort of thing. And, and, and truth be told those, I'm, I'm thankful for those feelings because in time, those feelings led me to the place of realizing that what I really needed was a relationship with my father. And in that relationship with him, and as that relationship began to grow deeper and stronger, I began to recognize the place where I was trusting him more because I began to see how his word was really active inside of me. See, that was, that, that was, that was key. And, and really, it happened with the Living Letter Yod. When, Yo, when Father expl explained to me that the Living Letter Yod even though it, it looks a lot like a mustard seed. You remember that, that scripture that used to talk about the mustard seed faith? You know, if you have a group faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you will say to the mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and it will be done by, by our Father who is in heaven. Well, that one little mustard seed, that one little tiny letter, that one little tiny dot, when I stopped to look at creation, that one little tiny dot contained all of creation inside of it. Every bit of the cosmos that we see was inside of the tiny little dot that Father pulled from the intention of his heart and placed it into the expanse that he, he created just for our, our cosmos and our world and our, our universe and our, our, the place where he placed mankind at. He, he, it all came from that little tiny dot. And then, I rem and then I remembered the fact that, wait a minute, that sounds an awful lot like that mustard seed of faith. And I heard the father say, yes, everything that you have ever needed was given in that measure of faith that I gave you from the beginning. And I realized it's, that's all he said to me, but I realized right after he said that, I realized that, that, that the problem had not been that what was already hidden inside of the, the measure of faith that he had given me, what my problem had been as, as what it was how I saw that measure of faith. I saw that measure of faith as being little or nothing, hence the reason why I would constantly cry out for more mustard seeds. And Father was saying all the time, that one little seed contains far more than you realize. It contains all that you will ever need and more, exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think, and it's already inside of you. It's already there. Now you see why we say, and I will bless, every day I will bless you, and I will laud your name forever and ever. Gimel, God is great and exceeding, exceedingly lauded, and his greatness is beyond investigation. Oh, stop, stop and think about that. His greatness is beyond investigation. No matter how much we try, no matter how much we look, no matter how... Father wants to show us, and, and what he shows us sometimes is so much that our human bodies just go, I almost freak out a little bit. I know mine does. I get to the point where it's like, oh, I don't know if I can handle anymore, Lord. You know, because it, he begins to open up such a, a beautiful expression of himself and a beautiful place of, of seeing who I am in him and who he is in me that, that I, I, I was like, I'm like, well, well, Father, I'm sitting here and yet I'm almost feeling the pressure this is the way I feel it, almost feeling the pressure of the fact that knowing that what you just gave me is still only scratching the surface, and there's still so much more. But I'm thankful for that because it's that it's that recognition and being, and of course, being thankful first for what he's given me, and then recognizing that there's more that makes me want to keep digging, that makes me want to keep moving, that makes me want to know him more. Now, it's not all wrapped up. Remember, this is not all wrapped up in the things that we do. It's who we are. It's the fact that we are a son and that we, we our father is yod heh vav -Heh. Our father is our God. And in that place, that, that, that relationship is the key of, of where we go. His greatness is beyond investigation. Dalit. 
Each generation will praise your deeds to the next, and of your mighty deeds, they will tell. I love that because Dalit usually re- replace, reflects um, and and in its literal translation is a door. And it's funny that the the actually the Hebrew word for uh the, that uh, that that's translated as God is great is Lador. <laughs> it's pronounced Lador. And now it's not referencing the same thing that we see as in a door, like when we go in and out of a of a room or that sort of thing. But the it it, it has the English translation of of door, if you will, uh, as far as the sound of it is concerned. You get me? I'm not talking about it being a door because it's speaking about the place of Father being great and exceedingly laud. Excuse me. Each generation, it's generation. I messed up there. I apologize, y'all. I went back to verse three. I apologize. Generation is the Hebrew word door. It is the word generation that is the Hebrew word door. The Hebrew word for great is gadol. So my apologies. I did, I did, uh, I got a little ahead of myself. I was a little bit too excited there. Each generation, lador is the Hebrew word there for the generation, will praise your deeds to the next. And of your mighty deeds, they will tell. Why? Why? Because in that place where we begin to tell our children and our children's children, the mighty deeds that Father has taken us through, it's a place where they can learn from and build from. I love the Hebrew culture in the sense where that in, in Israel itself, although I've not I've not been there yet, my, but what I have, have heard and and those who have been there and those who are from there have said this, that that the Hebrew culture is all set up as a biblical culture. It's not a, it's, it's, yes, it has government. Yes, it has, it has all the things that are necessary in order for a, for a group of people, for a, for a family, if you will. Remember that, 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 that Judah is Israel and that, or that, uh, or that Israel is a part of, uh, we're talking about the family of Israel and talking about the Hebrew people. And, and that in that place, that, that the culture being set up as a biblical culture, it's set up in such a way that, that even the children, the children's children are taught as they're grown up about the things of the father. Remember the scriptures that we used to, to hear saying, teach your children in the way that they should go. And when they are older, they will not depart from it. You know, I guess in a way that, that kind of convicts even convicts me because I look back at my own life and say, mm, I could have done better in that place. But Father, I thank you that from this place where you were teaching me even now, that that Father, you are, it's not about time. That from this place where I do receive it now, that I can see that even though I didn't believe it then, it didn't nullify the word as being true. Did you hear what I just said? Even though I didn't see it as I do now, back then, does not nullify that it wasn't true even back then. Okay? Hey, verse 5, the splendorous glory of your power and your wondrous deeds I shall discuss. And that's what we're doing in here. And, and when, we, when we move into the engagement, that's part of the things that I want, to, I want us to focus on today. Let's focus on that place of the wondrous deeds and let's discuss the wondrous deeds of the father and what he has done uh to what he has done for us and in us and through us and of the might of your awesome deeds they will speak this is bob and they will and your greatness and your greatness i shall relate of the might of your awesome deeds they will speak and your greatness i shall relate man mm. Verse 7, Zayin, a recollection of your abundant goodness they will utter, and of your righteousness they will sing exultantly. A recollection of your abundant goodness. Oh, man, if there's any one thing that, that I can say above anything else, and, and, and I'm so thankful for the Father taking me through the, the place where he began to reveal to me the, the place of his goodness. Because when, when I stop to really think about his abundance, goodness, abundant goodness, man. It, it, it blows me away every single time. You know, I don't know if I've told the story in here before, and I, I, I don't want to spend a lot of time telling the story, but I'll, I'll, I'll mention it just a little bit. Um, 
this has been probably uh, maybe eight months, nine months, a year ago, something like that. And and I, I started having a lot of pain in my stomach, discovered it was my gallbladder and uh, went into the hospital because I was I was having so much pain. I couldn't I couldn't stand it and uh, discovered that not only had my I was having gallstones, but my gallbladder had actually died and was was there was there was major issues going on in my gallbladder. And so they took me in for a surgery. And but it's crazy that even when the pain started as this this was going on, I could sense that father was doing something deep inside of me. And so it, it the more the pain hurt, the more I focused on him. And when I ended up going to the hospital and going to the doc and they said, yes, we're going to end up having to do surgery. I, uh, I was like, I, I had a piece of the father saying, go ahead and do that. So, so as we went into it, there was a place where I was sensing the Lord even stronger. And, uh, and after the surgery was over with, suddenly I began to have some dreams, some absolutely awesome dreams. And the only way that I could describe them were lucid dreams. In other words, I was kind of still awake, but kind of asleep at the same time. And as a matter of fact, my wife was saying that that when I was dreaming that that my hands would move. Probably, you know, I know some of you may say, well, it's probably the drugs. Well, okay. If you want to say that, that's fine with me. I don't care. But I know what father was doing inside of me. And and he was changing, he was changing me completely. And, and I was, I was actually moving because I was having these discussions with the father. And I remember on the uh, Friday or the Saturday, uh, I can't remember which, but on one of the days I said the next day, I think it was on uh, the Saturday, this next day would have been a Saturday. I said at three o'clock, I'm going to fall asleep and the Lord and I are going to have a meeting because I, during these, during these encounters that I was having, uh, I heard the Lord say at three o'clock on Saturday afternoon, I, afternoon, you and I are going to have a meeting. And to me, it felt like Lord, the Lord had just said, I'm going to set aside everything else and I'm going to spend time with just you. And, uh, and so I was like, oh, OK. And so I told my wife that. And sure enough, right at, right at about three o'clock on Saturday afternoon, I fell asleep. And I began to have this dream. And when I did, I dreamed that father and I were walking together in the secret place. As we were walking, we came upon this huge wooden door. I mean, it was so large that there was no way that I could even dream of trying to reach over and open that door by myself. It was and 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 it was almost as if it was almost as if God and I both, now hear me out, were were small in comparison to the door itself. But that was a that was a trick. <laughs> That was actually a trick because as we got closer to the door, I saw the father reach over almost as if, as if he was bigger than the door. He still felt like he was my same size, but he reached to the door like he was bigger than the door and opened the door. Now, now how does that go? You know, it, it was almost, that almost seems like a paradox where he was he was with me and 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 relating to me on my level, if you will, but yet at the same time was able to to appear and to hold that door and to open that door as if it was our size. And, and even though the door was absolutely huge, does that make sense? <laughs> it's crazy. But when he opened the door, he only opened it just a little crack. And he allowed me to look inside the door. And when I did, the only thing that I could describe, because the, the, what I saw inside of there is truly beyond words. The only way that I could describe it was that he showed me his goodness. And I was, I was absolutely blown away with what I was seeing inside of there. Instinctively, I reached out my hand through the door crack and I reached into the, the door itself and I grabbed a hold of his goodness. And I told Father, I said, Father, I am not going to ever let go of this goodness. I'm going to hold on to this goodness, just like when you showed me peace. I'm going to hold on to your goodness, and I will not let go. And I woke up, and I told my wife about the, the dream, and it is still affecting. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's going to affect me the rest of my life because it was, it was such a huge thing. And I began to recognize the, the goodness of God in every part of my life, both past, 
present and the goodness of God that we're moving into. Gracious and merciful is God, slow to anger. Now, this is the, the living letter Chet. Remember, this is an acrostic poem. So each one of these, each one of these verses begin with a new living letter. And this one is Chet. Chet in uh, uh, literally means fence or boundary, but it also speaks of covenant. It speaks of promise. It speaks of connection. So let's listen to that in connection to what Chet references. Gracious and merciful is God, slow to anger and great in bestowing kindness. That Hebrew word for kindness there is chesed. Chesed is many times uh, translated as mercy, but more often it's actually translated as kindness. So he is great in bestowing his mercy, great in bestowing his kindness towards us. Why? Because of his promises, because of of, of his love for us and what he has done for us. God is good to all. This is this is a tet, the living letter tet. Now, when I had the dream and father began to, uh, uh, to, to show me about the dream, he reminded me of the living letter tet. Tet uh, it means basket, but and so usually it's kind of like the picture of, of when you, you pick up the bounty or when you pick up the harvest, you put it into a basket. And, and that's a great a great uh, uh, definition or a great way of or picture of seeing the living letter Tet. But it it also begins the Hebrew word tov. Tov is the Hebrew word for good, and it's Tet Vav um, Beit. And so Tov begins to declare that place of the goodness of God. It literally means and literally reflects or or, or hints at the reflection of his goodness. So God is good to all. His mercies are on all his works. Yod, all your works shall thank you. God and your devout ones will bless you. I love that because the living letter Yod can be seen as a seed. It also means the all spark of creation. So when I was talking about creation earlier, the Yod here is expressing that place of creation. So it also is the beginning of, of, of us. Of, and really of every bit of, of creation, all of his creation contains his light because all of creation began with a yod. And so in all your works shall thank you. Why? Because the light is saying back to the, the father, father, we thank you because it's where we come from. We come from you. And your devout ones will bless you. Off of the glory of your kingdom, they will speak, and of your power, they will tell. Now, I love that because because cough, the living letter cough represents the palm of the hand, and and I and I love how the palm of the hand begins to speak when it speaks about how Father made us and how He fashioned us. He made us with His hands. He took us out of the dirt and out of the out of the dust, and He formed us by His hands, and He made us in His likeness and His image. But just as it represents Father creating us and making us into his likeness and image, the truth is, is they also reflect our hands. Because as we make, as we create, we're doing the same thing that the Father did. We, we're doing what the Father is doing. Remember that we are co-creators with him anyway. And so when, when, when we begin to take those things that he has given us and we begin to do something creatively with them, then now we have an expression of who we see on the inside of us, of who Father is and who he is in us and who we are in him. Does that make sense? So they reflect that place of who we are. So that's why I love, I love creativeness. And, I've, and the more that I've been in the Lord, the more that, that is, especially as he's begun to, to, to take me into the living letters and because and, we've been doing this for, for years, but but the, the more I go along, the more I see that even though I was not necessarily a creative person or I never saw myself as a creative person, I discovered that there was a creative side to me. And that creative side began to come out even more. And uh, and so I've, you know, I've, I've, I've been thankful for that. I need to actually spend a little more time doing that. The Lord told me years ago to paint. And uh, I've not, I'm, I'm not in, I'm not in error by, by this, but but I've I'm 
getting to the place where, because the more I say it, the more convicted I get, and the more I want to go out and get the stuff to be able to paint with. And, uh, uh, but I know the Lord told me to, to do that. And I actually had an opportunity not too terribly long ago to, to paint. Somebody provided some paints and ease and, a, and a board and I began to paint something. And, uh, and of course they, some of the people that were there said, have you ever painted before? I was like, no, not really. Uh, because there was a, it, it actually ended up turning out pretty good. <laughs> I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not a beautiful pan, I'm not a Van Gogh or a, but it, it it was like wait a minute maybe maybe there is a little bit of a of a a hidden talent or a hidden creative side why because the father had given me a creative creative side and i know that is in each and every one of you so of of the glory of your kingdom they will speak they will create they will do see speaking is is a part of that and yes speaking when we, as we speak remember the there's a oh boy as we speak we create but also the things that we make of our hands, we create. Remember, this letter is the living letter cough. This sentence is describing cough. But it also try, uh, it also speaks about the, the words that we speak. So what does that mean? That means that what we see on the inside of ourselves, remember that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And what we see on the inside of ourselves is what we speak. And as we speak them, they come into tangibility in the earth. We have a greater power with the words that the Father has given us. We have a greater, greater creative power with our words than we realize that we do. And I remember when Father first showed me that, man, I was convicted big time. Matter of fact, I started to get very, very quiet for a long time because I wanted to be careful. I wanted to be honorable and, 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 and speak the words of the Lord and not speak something just idly. Verse 12, which is the living letter Lamed. Lamed means to learn or to teach, to inform human beings of his mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of his kingdom. Well, of course, that's the whole key of, of Lamed. Lamed means to learn and to teach. And so as we learn of the Father, we're given an opportunity to be able to teach. And, and uh, that's why one of the that's one of the most awesome things about our school of the living letters and the things that we're doing even in our, in our yeshiva classes. Because uh, uh, we've we've been doing this some, but we're going to be going to a whole another level very soon with some things that I just recently learned. And uh, with regards to opening up an understanding of the scripture that I never could have thought imaginable. I have imagined a lot because the father had taken me through, but this opened up a whole another level. And uh, I can't wait to, to be able to share those things. But the fact is, is that of the glory of your kingdom, they will speak, excuse me, that's the verse 11, to inform human beings of his mighty deeds. That's the idea behind this, to inform everyone of his mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of his kingdom. Mem, your kingdom is a kingdom spanning all eternities. You remember earlier I was speaking about Olam? This as well as only a couple of other place, places in the scripture is this word is actually seen in the plural. Most of the time when we see the word forever, it's translated as olam. But in this case, it's olamim. And so whenever there's a yod bim, whenever there's that im sound at the end of a Hebrew word, that re reflects the place of it being a plural. And so it's not talking about forever. It's talking about a forever of forevers. Or, as we like to say, forever and ever. Matter of fact, a little bit later on in here, it says just that, and it's translated from the Hebrew of olamim, of saying forever and ever. So what does that mean? What does that mean, olam? In other words, let's go back to that place of his, of his awesomeness and his glory and his abundant goodness being unsearchable being not beyond investigation. Stop to think about that. And so we're talking about eternity upon eternity upon eternity with that Hebrew word olamim. And I love that because it's it's this living letter that this verse is, is, is speaking from is talking about mem references water. And so it's like 
wave after wave after wave, wave after wave of his glory, wave after wave after wave of his goodness. One wave, you know, the the, the next wave, uh, you know, overcoming or superseding the wave previous to it. So it's an ever increasing glory from glory to glory to glory. You're seeing the picture. It's kind of like starting off with just a little ripple ripple. And by the time you're done, you have a tsunami that's beyond recognition. That's the heart of the father to, to pour out his goodness in all of this. Your kingdom is a kingdom spanning all eternities and your dominion is throughout every generation. None. God supports all the fallen ones and straightens all the bent. I love that because, you know, we, we, we talk about the place where even in our own lives, we, we go back and we see those places where we messed up uh, even, even throughout, you know, even today. I mean, are there times when, when I stop and realize that I could have done something a little bit better, even if I may or may not have sinned in it, because there, there are times that, that in situations that that I may not sin in it, but yet I can see that I can do better. Does that make sense? I, I guess I guess I need to qualify that a little bit more because I want to ask this question of you. Do you think there's a place where we can get, where we can be in the Lord, where sin is no longer an issue? Yes, we know that the blood of Yeshua covers all of our sins. But can we can we get to that place? I want to leave that as a rhetorical question. I don't want to even try to answer that. I don't want anybody in here trying to answer that question. I want you just to hear what Father is saying to you about that question and how to answer that question. But God supports all of the fallen ones because he 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 straightens up the ones that are bent. When we fall, he picks us up. Actually, his hand is there to prevent us from fully falling. He catches us before our, our, our face hits the ground, and he stands us back upright. Samak, the eyes of all look to you with hope, and you give them their food in its proper time. Now I love Samic because Samic is a letter that 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 best is best described as supernatural support, and it, it speaks about the, the the place where Father has completely protected us and surrounded us, and He is supporting us. There's a there's an old Hebrew story that talks about how Samic, uh, when when Father wrote onto the sapphire tablets, sapphire tablets were the tablets that were first written by Father when Moshe went to the mountain. These were the tablets that were brought down. And as, as, as Moshe got, or Moses got close to the bottom of the mountain, he saw that the people of, or the Erev Rav, or the, there was a group that had, had built the golden calf. And as a result, he smashed those tablets. He dropped and smashed those tablets. And, and so, but when the, the, the story goes that when father wrote onto those sapphire stones, that he wrote them in such a way that the letters went all the way through to the other side of the sapphire cube. And so when we look at the living letter Samech, there's it's 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 the only one of the 22 Hebrew living letters that is completely enclosed. All the other ones have an opening, but Samech is actually completely closed. It kind of looks like a spiral, and one of its other meanings is actually thorns. So it also implies and speaks of the crown of thorns that was placed on Yeshua's head. But the story goes that that if if it's completely enclosed, then that means the center part by gravity should fall out of the sapphire cube, but it didn't. It remained in place, being supernaturally held in place inside of the sapphire cube to express that place of the Father saying, I am here to give you all that you need that I will supernaturally support you. Because as you look to me with hope, I will give you your food. I will give you those things that you need in their proper time. Ayin, you open your hand and you satisfy the desire of every living thing. You open your hand and satisfy the desire. You open my eyes to allow me to see that your hand does satisfy me in every living thing. 
pay. Righteous is God, 17. Righteous is God in all his ways and magnanimous in all of his deeds. This is a declaration. This is a speaking. And, and here David is saying, righteous is God in all of his ways and magnanimous in all of his deeds. Zadi, Zadi, 18. God is close to all who call upon him and to all who call upon him sincerely. I love that because the living letter Zadi represents the place of, of, of righteousness. It's a letter that, that, that actually is translated into righteousness and means righteousness. But it's also a letter that speaks of a hunter. And I love that because it's it's one who wants to go out. See, a, a Zadik is one who wants to go out and to and to hunt, to hunt the things that the father has has set aside just for his sons. Remember the scripture that said is the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of kings to search it out. That's what this is talking about. And that's what Zadik is is re referencing in the midst of this place. Verse 19, this was the one I'm going to, I'm going to, I want to finish out the rest of this and then I'm going to come back to this. Verse 19 was the one that I wanted to spend a little bit time, but a time with, because this is the one that father's been messing with me the most about. So in this, it's the living letter, Kof. Sorry, hold on just a second. It's not, it should be Resh. In this is the living letter, Resh. 19. Give me a second here. Seems like I skipped a letter. <laughs> I was. Uh... Anyway. Eighteen should actually be the kof. God is close to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him sincerely. Verse 19 begins with the living letter resh. And uh, uh, I thought that was right. The And what he says here is the will of those who fear him, he will do. You talk about, and their cry he will hear and he will save them. I'm not giving it enough uh, oomph behind it because I'm telling you, this one, this one has messed with me. Let me come back to this one in just a moment. Verse 20, God protects all who loves him, but all of the wicked he will destroy. That's the living letter Shin. Shin is a letter that speaks of fire, and it also speaks of tooth. And so it talks about this place of consuming something, both consuming something for energy as well as consuming them something for destruction. 21, my mouth will declare the praise of God and may all flesh bless his holy name forever. And there is the living letter Tav right there. May my mouth declare the finishing that Father, that you and my, that, that you are glorious. And that may my mouth declare the praises of you. And my, may all of my flesh bless your holy name forever and ever. There's the, la, um, the um, Olamim that I was talking about just a moment ago. I know this class has been a little bit different today because I'm going through it, and uh, it's a way that that I don't normally go through these psalms, but I, I felt the Lord calling me to. But I want to spend some time on this one scripture, and, it, and it's the one that begins with the living letter Resh. The will of those who fear him, he will do. The Hebrew word for uh, the will there actually can be just translated as not only will, but desire. Do you all remember the scripture where it talks about the desires of those who seek him, that, 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 that the Lord give, grants us the desires of our heart? Well, that really, that comes from the place of what this is talking about here in Psalm 145, verse 19. But 
to me, when Father, when I first saw this verse, there was such a, a spirit of the fear of the Lord that came on me that I, 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 I didn't even know how to speak. And I'm still, or even right now, not being able to fully express the depth of what I saw and what I felt in the midst of those. Stop to think about that for just a minute. The will of those who fear him, he will do. Do you realize that that in that place that Father has given us, in that place where we we fear the Lord? Now, what does that what does that word fear mean? In Hebrew, it's the Hebrew word yura. But and I could I could go into a, a, a deep dis- discussion with regards to that. But does it reference the place of being afraid? You know. I know most of the time when we hear about the fear of the Lord, we usually hear it being de- defined in the place of the expression of just awe or, or honoring and, and just the, the absolute just astoundedness or, or the awesomeness of the Lord himself. But I'm not going to lie to you. I, I don't know about you, but for me, when he first said this verse to me, there, there was a fear, but not a fear in the sense of fear of coming judgment, but it was, a, it was a gripping kind of fear that said, do you realize the power that is behind what is being said here? Do you realize the extension and what he is saying by saying the will of those who fear him, he will do? That gives us a great responsibility. He's giving us a great responsibility. Now, it is contingent upon this place of, of recognizing who he is. And, and truth be told, that, that in this place, as we as we seek after him with, with all of our heart, our mind, our soul, and our strength, what is really the main commandment, the most important commandment that is ever spoken of in all of the scripture, in all of the Old Testament? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. That is the key to all of the rest of the law, all of the rest of what the Father is saying. And so if we stop to think about how the Father has given us this place of, 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 of honoring him and respecting him, that we can see that, that he is really wanting to, to reveal in us that awesome power that he has given to us. Now, thank you, Father, that in our in our growth and in our maturity, there is a place of your grace and your mercy that protects us along this path. But, Father, when I stop to think about you, when you Yeshua, when you went out to the to the on the boat and the the storm was raging around, and and the the disciples were getting scared and freaked out because they saw the the enormity of the storm and so they had to go wake you up yeshua and then and they said they said hey don't you realize the storm that we're in and what was yeshua's response back to the disciples oh ye of little faith have how long have i been with you why this psalm was already written this is a psalm that they knew well that they had they had they had been praying and they had been speaking and so and 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 here yeshua the the yeshua hamashiach the mashiach that the 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 the, the people of israel had been crying out for was right there right now with them and he was saying i'm i'm here with you and i'm teaching you this place and don't do you not realize and so sometimes there's a fear that goes along with that because we we recognize the awesomeness of the power that goes along with that. But he's saying he's saying to us, "I've given you this place." I promised you guys I would go a little bit deeper with this, and I will, because one of the ways that you can look at this is from uh, a a uh, Hebraic perspective of gematria. And, and funny enough, I've not normally been teaching the gematria of the Hebrew. It's just not something that the Lord had revealed to me, or he had revealed it to me, but I just, I, I stayed away from it on purpose because uh, I didn't, I didn't understand it well enough that, that I could begin to incorporate it. And, uh, but Father's begun to, to 
show me an even greater and depth. And actually, some of what I learned over this past weekend had to do with the gematria and what it looked like. Well, the gematria of Ratzon, which is the, the Hebrew word for will or desire here, is actually 346. And so it's broken down by resh, which is 200. Uh, uh, the, the word ratzon, which is, again, the Hebrew word for will or desire, is resh, zadi, vav, and nun. Uh, the living letter resh actually speaks about the place of outlook and insufficiency. Now, I really thank Dr. Giannis Anders and Darla Fields and the expression of what they taught in this, because this was part of, of the gematria that I did not know. And I, I love this because Resh, when, when we first saw this about outlook and insufficiency, I was like, how those two just don't, don't seem like they're going, they go together. Until Darla came up and said this, she said, your outlook reveals your insufficiency. Or if you will, uh, what was it? Not, not so much reveals, your outlook reveals your insufficiency. It's, uh, I had it written down here. Oh, my outlook determines my insufficiency. See what I'm saying? And so it begins to speak about the place of, well, what do I see and how do I see it? I know I've been teaching you guys this through the, the previous videos that we've had, you know, where we talked about what do you see and how do you see it? And that's exactly what this is talking about. My outlook determines my insufficiency. If I have a very glim outlook, then I'm going to find insufficiency in something. But if my outlook is in the place where I recognize who I am in the Father, and then he has set me apart to be holy unto him, then there is no sin. There is no insufficiency. You see what I'm saying? Why? Because it's all in him. Zadi is, a, is, is 90, and it represents the place of righteousness. Vav is six, and it represents man or mankind. And Nun is 50, and it represents the place of Yovel. Yovel is the Hebrew word for jubilee. So it speaks of the place of coming to that, that, that expression of the jubilee, that, that completion of the 49 to the place of the 50th where there's absolute freedom. There's, there's, there's absolute jubilee. And so right there, that, that takes us even deeper. And I don't have time to, to spend to just dig into to that any anymore, but I, I want to kind of go a little bit further because when you look at 346, there are other Hebrew words that have the same gematria as 346. Now, I'm not going to go through the list of them and what they are, but I am going to kind of talk about what some of the meanings of each one of those are. So for 346, we have hail or hailstones. Uh, they're a race of people, a Greeks, that uh, where purple dye was actually found from. It means trespass or offering or condemnation or an idol, uh, to move away from or to depart, to feel or touch a fountain, polished, a loan or a debt, burning or, con or configuration, a desolation or desolateness or gloom. Now, I don't know about you, but as looking, you know, when I look at this place of Ratzon, and, and the will or the desire of those who fear him, he will do. And I look at this number. Now, I hope you guys are okay with me going a little bit deeper here and, and expressing this. But I, I think it's really cool to see this because his father showed me this. I want to show you a secret here in just a moment. I looked at this number and I thought, well, all of those sound kind of negative. But right next to this, I've got a website that I used for this. And right next to this, it talks about how... Uh, 346 is the result of two times 173. Now, 173 itself is the 40th prime. Now, all of that has a meaning to it, and I'm not going to dig into that right now, but I found it interesting that it was the result of two times 173. So, any times we see, anytime we see two of something, we see a witness of something. Now, listen to what the witness is on these, on these words that are found with 173. The first one is this, father is pleasure. Valley, to shut up or to confine oneself. Now, that first one right off the top, the father is pleasure, begins to open up an expression that says something very, a whole lot more positive. Now, valley, I know some of us may go back to the old religious way that we used to see valley. 
and and how valleys were always a bad thing. I remember back when I was a kid, you know, well, I'm in the valley this week. I need to get back up to the mountaintop, you know, and, and all the expressions. So I, you know, in my in my growing up, I always saw a valley as a negative place to be. But where does the 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 growth and the and the bounty actually occur many times in in the midst of a of a a, a mountain range? The valley is where there's there's blossoming and blooming of things. Are you following me? And so the valley is a good place to be because in this place of the the valley, the mountains have been made level. The mountains have been. But this shut up or confine oneself may seem like. It's it's that I'm I'm trying to to put myself into bondage. No, what this is saying is talking about to set myself aside, to allow myself the time to be quiet, to be quiet before the Lord, to spend time with my Father. So, I started to ask the Father. Well, three forty six, one seventy three. There's a big difference between the two of these, and I heard him say this. He said, in the place where it is our will. And we are standing in the in the place of it being our will and our will only in the place of the singular. That's when we look at this place of of the of the difficulties and the and the harsh words that we saw in 346 or the difficult words. Now, just because those are difficult doesn't mean there's not a good side to them because there is. There's an expression of that as well, even in this. But on the 173, when it was talking about the two times 173. It was the witness of my father and I together. And that's where he takes me into his pleasure. So I hope I have stirred up in you this place of, of, of digging just a little bit deeper. My heart has always been that in, in our classes, and not only just the, uh, the School of Living Letters of Yeshiva, but also here in the Psalms class, to, to stir up the Holy Spirit within you, to, to, if you will, be like a spoon. Now, Holy Spirit's the one that's, that's stirring, but, but allowing me to be like a spoon that helps to stir you up and to help stir up that place inside of you to be able to search for the Father. Because it's, 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 this is something that, that, I, that I talk about all the time, and I was reminded of it as a, to a greater extent this weekend during the conference, and that was this. You want to know the mystery of God? Do you want to really know what the mystery of God is? The mystery of God is the mystery that he shows you. Let me repeat that one more time. The mystery of God is the mystery that he shows you. So, Father, I, I pray that as as we have gone through this and, and today, as we've done things just a little bit differently than we normally do, Father, that, that you would stir each and every one that is here today, Father, each and every one that are listening to this on the on the YouTube channel, that, that as they've made it to this point, there's a blessing that is, is poured upon them, Father, as they move from this place and begin to dig even deeper with a new and a and a, 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 a joy inside of them that, that, that helps to, to spur them on. That, Father, that something that we said during, during this today, something you said through me today, Father, will stir them up to say, I want to dig into that. I want to know about that more. I want to see about what the words, because in that place, Father, that I can find the trust that I have been lacking in you. Father, I can find a confidence that I never knew even existed because you've begun to show me your word, you begin to show me that place where this and how it applies to me and how it applies to my life and how I can walk through each and every one of these things in my life. And so, Father, I thank you because that confidence then builds me to that place when I hear your voice and when I look at the world and see the difficulties that are going on in the world, Father, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not messed up by them. I'm not affected by them. Why? Because I have confidence in you. I trust you fully and know that you will carry me even through what appears to be a very dark time. I remember when Father took me into the darkness. One of the first times, one of the things that I realized was that he showed me treasure inside of that darkness. And I remembered as I was meditating on this later, one of the things that he said to me was this. Do you recognize that in every situation, every dark situation you always had, there was always a treasure on the other side of that, of that dark situation? 
And I, I began to realize I don't have to look at things as being hard or dark or difficult. That, Father, when these things come up and I recognize them for what they are, Father, I can say, you know what? Thank you, Father, because you have given me a treasure hunt. You've There's there's a place in darkness. Why? Because you have hidden a treasure deep inside of that. And I don't have to look at it as being a problem. Instead, I can look at it as being a treasure hunt. And so, Father, I thank you that that is what you're taking us into Father, that even in the Psalms class, that 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 there is there, I am I'm, I'm there's a group of treasure hunters that are coming together to search out the depth of your word. Because Father, as we begin to, to discover the things that you've hidden away just for us, that Father, that we can we can then share those things and we can share of the treasure that you've given us. And in that place, we can help one another, we can see the connection, we can see how the body works together as one as a whole, as a chad, in you, Father. And I thank you for that, in the name of Yeshua. For those of you that are on YouTube, thank you for, for being a part of this. And so in wrapping this up, Yevarechcha Adonai Vayishmarecha, Ye'er Adonai Panavelecha Vichunecha, Yesa Adonai Panavelecha Vayasimlecha Shalom. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And I bless you in the name of Yeshua.